Hello. In 1988, I went on a Himalayan trek um, around the Annapurna Massif uh, in a small group, um, and it was 160 miles of walking, and it took us um, 21 days with a rest day in the middle. Uh, during that time, I wrote a fairly comprehensive diary um, with uh, information, but also written accounts of uh, my time there and uh, with illustrations and what have you. Um, and from this diary I've managed to uh, so far write a couple of pieces um, and one of those I'm going to put onto this video now. The Annapurna circuit starts in a very small village called um, Dumrei um, which is on the uh, road from Kathmandu to Nepal's second um, city uh, which is called uh, Pokhara. Um, although this is a major road, it was a very um, dangerous track for us to be travelling in a kind of coach and we actually did see a coach that had fallen down off the road down into a river and, uh, and there were bodies there so it was a really chilling start to this walk. <clears throat> the trek goes up a valley which when we were there was being, um, uh, the, the track was being expanded so it would take motor vehicles and um, this the, uh, but for about three days we walked uh, alongside a track that was being developed for motor vehicles. But then after that we were on high mountain paths um, which could only be walked with difficulty. You had to watch your step up and down. And amazingly donkeys and mules were being used to transport the materials. But there was certainly no uh, motorised transport or anything from here on. Uh, we walked for days and days past uh, just stunning scenery. I'm not going to describe all that now. We had a rest day at a place called Manang, which was an incredibly remote, high up, cold at night place, uh, but absolutely fantastic. Um, two days later, we crossed the Thorong La, which is a high level uh, mountain pass. Um, it's at 17,700 feet, so it was by far the highest I'd been um, on foot. And it was very thin air and it was a real tough uh, journey getting across there. We started at four in the morning um, and flogged our way up to the Thorongla. Down the other side, we, we stopped in Muktanath. And my account that I'm going to read basically takes us down from Muktanath to Kagbeni. And then the main bit is the uh, the deep river valley, twice the depth of the Grand Canyon between Kagbeni and Jomsom. It was such a memorable day. The piece I'm going to read has uh, been published in my anthology uh, Wild Giant Sleep uh, that I put together in 2015, although I actually wrote it in uh, 1988. It's also featured in um, Left Lion, which is uh, Nottingham's uh, major cultural magazine and listings magazine and uh, they, they they printed the whole story here and uh, illustrated it rather handsomely as well so uh, that's its uh, history really Whistling Down to Jomsom part prose poem and part fever dream we come into Kagbeni, crowded, closed. Tibetan streets, a river through the road, a complex, a jumble of lanes, dark alleys that narrow beyond vision, openings out onto the wide flood plain of the Kali Gadanka. Figures on the stones moving against vast stretches, the Mesa hillsides, the flanks of interwoven mountains crumpled into a landscape that becomes Tibet. A magical place, lunch in the cool upstairs of a rest house, chapatis, peas fried in onion, tinned chicken slices and tinned fruit, decorations formed from an old Colgate tooth powder tin prominent among the iconography, our boots cracking the new mud floor, a puppy crapping among us, Susie bringing in a ten week old baby, his mother's jumper folded under him as a nappy.
and out into the valley, all in scarves and bandanas, against the winds coming up from the south, and into the Kaligadanka, the wide, flat valley, the beach between the feet of mountains, the muddy wanderings of the split river, the laughter at the slippery stones, the sight of an old woman piggybacked by her husband along the narrow side track, smashing rocks in the search for ammonites, and the beginning of trees on the hills, and yellow flowered gorse, and a purple clover in the stones, and the dust rising up like a cyclone, in the distance gathering momentum before dipping and then setting off towards us. And the five Nepalese girls travelling back home to Jomson, arms swinging, shawls over their faces, and the huge curving rock faults, and the thunder colours further up, and the Iger War face on the northeast of Nilgiri appearing in the clouds that take on dust haze layers of shade above the ever darkening hill ridges, while a wild, drunken Nepali attaches himself to us, reeling through the canyon, waving his stick until we shake him off, and we join the Nepalese girls who giggle at my attempts to sing, sing through my bandana. Then they sing to us, leaning forward in earnestness and against the wind, and on across the pebbles of packed earth, while everywhere white with surface salt, and into the bumpy mud stream, main of the street of the town, an ugly mixture of western influences, but not before we've seen riders in the valley corralling horses, and the relations walking out into the wild land to meet the girls. and we arrived to porters and dumped loads in the main street. Some confusion and words from timber and we step inside a hotel with a round of apple brandy and it's the worst image of the remote lands where a dissolute German and a local leer and press Rakshi onto Krishna who shares some with me and then out head spinning into the street around the back of a rest house to find a crowded camping space like a bombed out refugee camp, children watching, dogs that creep, and huddled people breaking wood for fuel. And in the mess tent, our young travelling companion, whom Holly will mother and keep beside her in the night to deliver to his father in the morning, and he, wide eyed as he eats with us and takes three helpings of soup, and then Outside at 8.30, as the lamp burns, only Susie and I are left with our diaries. A dog is yelping, and laughter, coughing and conversation comes from the porter's campfire. And the vast changes that we've seen today, from the town below the pass, to the entry into Tibet through Kagbeni, with the cherry blossom and the moonscape, other planet, other consciousness and the tapping of the stick on the miles of stones to the one horse bombed out resting place have left a patchwork day, a richly woven threadbare cloth of a day, a rags and riches of experience. <laughs>